Welcome, this is Ulyanka and today we are meeting an accomplished artist for body painting, airbrush and special effects, Alex Hansen. He is a 7 time world champion and today he is going to share interesting facts about himself and his journey as an artist. Welcome Alex. Hi, how's, how's it going? Yeah, fine, good. It's lovely to see you here and thank you for agreeing uh, to meet and to chat with me. So, My pleasure, thank you for having me. Yeah, so we met um, in 2019 in World Body Painting Festival, then when I first met you, you were a judge at the, at the time. And mm -hmm. um, I always wanted to do interviews with people who make an input into face body painting world. And obviously you were one of the first ones which I would like to meet and chat to you. So can okay. you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Where are you from? Where did you grow up? What was your childhood like? So we want to see you not not only as an artist, as or um, but also as a person. Okay. Well, um, I'm originally from Brazil. Mm -hmm. I was born in Rio de Janeiro and back in 1968. Um, my mom was a very young mother. She was 15 when she had me, so she was very young. So growing up with my mom was like having a sister and a mother mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, eventually, uh, we moved to Vancouver. Um, when I was three years old, lived there for four years. Um, I was I was uh, adopted. This is where I got the Hansen name uh, from my, my stepfather, um, uh, Alec, uh, Wayne Hansen. And uh, we kind of kept the name after my mom divorced. So she, we eventually moved to New York. We lived in New York for four years. Um, I took some painting classes because I was always very artistic. I loved sculpting and painting and drawing when I was very young. I think it's my mom has always influenced me in doing so. Um, and then uh, we went to Brazil for one year uh, to visit family. We were there in 1980, the whole year of 1980. And, uh, and then we moved to Montreal and uh, we stayed in Montreal for almost 32 years. I lived in Montreal and uh, back in 2011, I decided to move to to Mexico with my ex. And uh, yeah, so that and basically we split up. And then I just since 2013, I've been traveling the world. I haven't. I'm pretty much a gypsy. <laughs> See, so where do you live now? Right now, I'm in Italy. I'm uh, in uh, the Marque area, which is um, the east coast uh, of um, the Ad 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 Attica uh, Sea. Um, it's about uh, maybe three hours from Rome. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So do you live on your own or with the family? Well, I, I live on my own in a sense. I'm, I'm with my fiance, but she, right now she's traveling the world. Uh, she's in Saudi Arabia uh, teaching classes there. And she's coming back out classes. Well, makeup. She does okay. makeup. Okay. In Saudi, they don't, they don't teach body painting because it's illegal. Oh, so, I see. so is it possible so, just now with the COVID? Uh, it's difficult, um, uh -huh. definitely uh, to give classes and and large am uh, amount of people. But uh -huh. like me, I I've, I've been going back and forth to Korea for the past um, what four years. Uh -huh. uh, I do three months in Korea. I do three months in Italy. Back in Korea, and I teach. Uh -huh. I teach in classes in Korea. So I teach. Um, airbrushing and costume design and headpiece design. Mm -hmm. All my all the classes I give in Korea, everybody's been vaccinated and everybody's tested. And uh, yeah. so it's, it's very safe. It's a very safe country, actually. They, they're very strict on, on, on the rules. Mm -hmm. So teaching in Korea is very enjoyable, but also, you know, it's it's very safe. OK, good, good. OK, so how and when did you start face painting? Yeah, you obviously you said that you were very artistic, but how did you take the brush for painting and body specifically? Well, I've, I've never been really a face painter. I've always been a body painter. Mm -hmm. um, I started back in 1987 in a nightclub called the Thunderdome. And at the Thunderdome, um, we used to change the decor every week. Like we had, every night had a different theme. We had one night was jello wrestling, one night was body painting, one night was beer bash and all these different things. So um, I got started, started getting involved in body painting back in 1987, but uh, I was horrible. It was just, it was just, I was so bad. I, there was, there wasn't makeup for, for body painters. It was very raw. Um, I think the first body painting I did was I did a, a flower with a pot it was really bad 
And um, I did the competition for, for a year. Like every week I would compete and compete every year and I would never win. It was very frustrating because I was, I was pretty much doing all the paintings in the club. That's what I was hired for. I was hired to paint uh, murals every week, change the decor every week. But uh, I think the biggest frustration was body painting for me. And eventually I kind of, I kind of understood the whole concept because uh, I was painting for myself. I didn't care what everybody thought, but I had to paint for the judges. Mm-hmm. And that's when everything changed. And I, I started winning and started winning in every week. So eventually, I, you know, I did well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I believe that every artist, when they start, they think, oh, it was so horrible back then. But, you know, you, you change, you, you develop. And obviously, yeah, I mean, put yourself. Yeah, definitely, you definitely develop. I mean, the whole thing is that we have these, we have a, a certain creative idea that we 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 want to reach, and what happens is that our, our technique is really low, and eventually we get to a certain point where we're stuck. We we we, we become better, but we get stuck. And mm-hmm. the most people that succeed are the people that keep keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they break through, and that's mm-hmm. that's that's what. That's what I did. I I, I worked really hard, and uh, uh, it was it was it was very difficult in the beginning. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you are more body like airbrush artist, are you? Yeah. I I, I started off uh, when I started body painting. It was all brush. It was it was like a gouache. It was acrylic paint, mm-hmm. and. Um, Eventually, I started. Uh, I met an artist from Toronto who was an airbrush artist. He he did a lot of set designs for TV shows, and he came and uh, replaced me at the club I was working because I got very sick. I, I put myself in a hospital working too hard. Mm. So he taught me how to airbrush. The first time I, I I loved it, but eventually after the third time I tried it, I hated it because my gun wasn't working. Mm. I didn't understand why it wasn't working. But eventually, I understood why later on in life why. I didn't, it took me six years before picking up the airbrush again after that, because the problem was that I didn't know how to clean it. Mm -hmm. So learning to keep your, your, your equipment in proper condition, Mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier to, to, to enjoy airbrushing. I can understand you here because whenever I think of airbrush, I've got a good airbrush, like proper one. But I'm always thinking, mm, should should I use it? Mm, I'll need to clean this afterwards. So I always pick up the brush. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah. you can achieve well, incredible that, effects with that. Yeah. Well, I I learned about I I got back into airbrushing because there was a demand in Montreal, uh-huh. and um, there was a, a barber shop that wanted me to paint uh, a couple of murals for their barber shop, and they said, well, we want airbrushing. I'm like, well, I don't have an airbrush, uh-huh. so. I didn't want to lose the contract. And I said, yes, I'll do it. I went out, I borrowed like $700 from one of my friends. Mm-hmm. I bought a compressor and I bought an airbrush and I did the job. It paid for everything. But eventually I started working more and more with the airbrush. And um, I started really expanding on doing bigger murals and and, and, and and restaurants and all these different things with the airbrush. I think the body painting airbrush came after that mm. with the airbrush. It came after doing all the murals and all that because what happened was very difficult was um, because when you do murals, you think murals and body painting are completely two different worlds, but they're not. It's it's exactly the same technique because the only difference is that you're not using tape, you're not using an exacto knife to do cutting, but it's the same technique using the airbrush. It's a mental thing. It's something like, because that's what was the problem was that... um, I was used to using brush and airbrush and all that on murals, but on the body, I couldn't do that. So eventually I had to rethink the way I was thinking because I was Mm -hmm. separating the worlds and they're basically the same. But now if you go back, if you go back to a mural, wouldn't you say that it's so much easier because the planning is so easy, like so easy on the square wall than on the body, is it? Um, No, well... No, I don't think so. I don't think no. because the, the way I process my body painting is the same way I process my, my mural work. And it's, mm-hmm. The only difference is that it's a, it's a solid wall and it's, you, you don't have to base coat it. You just start painting. Uh-huh. Uh, when you when you body painting, the only thing that's different is that you have to give them a good base coat. A bit, good word. You have to place all the colors where you need them. Mm, so that's yes. really important. 
-hmm. But I mean, it's it's something that uh, you know you you have to uh, mentally change the way you think mm -hmm. when you when you do the body painting and doing mural work. And the reason why I got into body painting after with the airbrush is because I was making good money. Mm -hmm. I was making crazy money. Okay. I was working with eleven production companies. I was doing uh, almost a, an event every night, making a thousand a night. And I was I was making crazy money and I was I was spending money too buying new equipment and buying mm -hmm. all the stuff that I needed and uh, also makeup was very expensive at the time because eventually I, I got involved with makeup mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't using acrylics anymore yes yes nowadays you, if you use acrylics you, it's not like it's people not good. wouldn't think oh. yes you're you're a professional or something but back then people didn't know or didn't have paints for that we didn't so, have we didn't have yes. companies making. Yes, exactly. But the whole thing is that um, one thing that uh, about makeup is that like there, there are always new companies coming out and mm -hmm. it, it's it's really choosing the ones that that um, that works for you. I mm -hmm. mean, that's what's more important is that because I've, I've worked with Chameleon, I've worked with uh, with um, with Diamond FX. I've worked with a lot of different companies. I've been sponsored like they used to throw mm -hmm. products that please try our product, use our product. And eventually, I'm right now. I'm using Pro Air. Pro Air mm -hmm. is it's an incredible product. It's it's it lasts a long time. It's uh, pretty. It's durable, and the colors mm -hmm. are beautiful, and it, it goes through the gun really well. Yeah, that, I heard that that works really well with airbrush. And they have mm -hmm. different levels of like of um, whether they are washable or how they are washable, something like this. I'm I'm not sure because I I'm not really working with them. Well, um, what's great about uh, Pro Air is that it's a, it's a hybrid makeup. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's an alcohol-based alcohol, alcohol -based makeup. But um, if it was just the alcohol-based makeup that they have, like, you know, uh, uh, Temp2 and all these other companies that have uh, tattoo ink, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what they call it. Uh, the difference between Pro Air is that uh, it stays on, it resists water, you can go swimming with it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, What's great about it is that if you use liquid soap, it washes off. You oh, don't have to use great. Off. This is great. Yes. Yeah, it's still it's still a hard. You have to have a sponge and you have to scrub, but it, it still comes off with liquid soap, and then you just rinse it off with water. And that's what's great yeah, about this it. Yeah, this is this is very useful yeah. actually. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is. Uh, do you have any person who inspired you in your career when you just started or now? Yeah, I mean, there there are tons of artists that uh, that I inspire from even till today. Um, I I when I started body painting, there was two artists that I really really changed the way I, I worked. There was uh, Leroy Roper. Mm -hmm. He is uh, one of the first airbrush artists that I've I've, I've known on the internet, and uh, he's a he's a he's from Texas. I think he's from Dallas, Texas. He's a phenomenal artist. Um, he really inspired me of working with the uh, models that the beauty of models and, and his style was very, very, really sensual. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked his work. And then there was Pasher, Pasher House, which is uh, mm -hmm. an, another very famous uh, body painter. He lives in um, Los Angeles right now. Uh, we're, here, we're still connected. We've done a couple of uh, gigs together in the past. Um, what really inspired me about Pasteur is that he's an illustrator, and uh, he had done a piece on um, on a bald bald man's head, and it was very biomechanical. But all all the stencils that he used were all he made himself, and that's where I started going, "Wow, this is such a great thing! I'm going to take that and go further with it." And that's where I, I developed my style through Pasteur, and he's such a he's a great guy. He's really um, open to, you know, helping you out and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So it was really great to connect with him eventually. So um, since you mentioned about stencils, do you do your own stencils yourself as well? Well, when I do when I do body paintings, I make my I create my own stencils. I used to have a stencil line. I used to work with a company from the U.S. that pr produced my stencils, mm -hmm. and we're selling it all over the world. I got into a bit of a confrontation with uh, another partner of theirs that mm. she was doing her stencils and I kind of left I left I left the company I didn't want to deal with uh, the politics yes. I'm not really a person that I'm not kind of person that wants to make money well I want to make money for sure but I don't want to deal with with all 
all of the backlash to politics yeah. and people yeah. backstabbing and stuff like that. So, that's worth so for me, yeah, yeah, because I've been offered, I've been offered to have my own airbrush with my name on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had stencil companies, I had uh, book offerings and stuff like that. But it's just for me, it's I'm not a businessman. I'm more of an artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so can you, when you're painting, like body painting, can you describe your day? Like, is there any procedures that you like to do? Anything in particular? Well, usually when I start a uh, body painting project, it's months before, like the World Body Painting Festival. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm, I'm working on my concept now. I'm doing, uh, I'll show you just a second. I'm doing all these silicone molds that I'm making for, for prosthetics. Uh, I'm also starting the headpiece and the boots. This is, I'll show you very quickly. This is the boots I started. So I'm, I'm starting all the, all the different projects. So yeah, the, how I start off is basically I end up, um, a lot of times I start with the headpiece. I don't know why I always start with the headpiece and then I create the art. Um, this kind is of my, adjusting my, this to the, to, the, to the headpiece. Yeah, yeah. So basically I start off with the headpiece. Well, I have an idea of what I'm doing. Of course, definitely. yes. Uh, I have a basic idea what I'm going to do, but I always start off with the headpiece. I start researching the headpieces and accessories and... I build everything before. Mm -hmm. And once I get to the body painting, what I usually do is I, I prep the model. I make sure that the model is comfortable. I make sure that everything is professional. I usually lay down uh, a medium base airbrush. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually start from the top, the back, the legs, back of the legs. And then I start uh, using stencils. I, I pretty much uh, put the stencils on. I spray very light coat. So I just have uh, just the detail of what I need to, like the important details. So, because the stencils are, are really made for um, making the proportions right. Because mm -hmm. if you freehand it, if you're good at freehanding, you can do it. I could do freehand, it's not a problem, but you lose time because sometimes yeah, you're, you're one, one eye is a bit lower and this and that. But if you have a stencil and you know exactly all the proportions, mm -hmm. you just spray it on very lightly. And, and then you start freehanding everything. Everything is all freehand. Mm -hmm. So I start off with a uh, medium base. I start doing um, stencils in a darker base, a darker color. And then I start from light. I start the lighter colors. Then I start the front lighter colors, back lighter colors, and I kind of go back and forth. Because mm -hmm. what's really important about body painting is uh, we're all artists. So um, we have this perception of what we want to do and what, what we want to complete. And sometimes it's impossible, even for someone that's quick as I am. Um, what's really important about when you're doing a job and when you're doing a competition is that it looks finished. Mm -hmm. So if you, you work different parts of the body, you do medium, medium, then more detail, more detail, and you keep going back and forth. Um, even if you don't get the fine, fine details, everything looks even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is more, more points for you from the judges and also more points from you from the client because mm -hmm. the client says, wow, you did so much detail, but in your mind, is that could have done so much more, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of way of thinking. So I basically, that's how I work. And uh, I, I start placing all the different, uh, uh, because airbrushing is about layering. It's like a mm -hmm. marble effect. Uh, you have to start off with the lighter colors, go darker, lighter, then darker. And that's how you, you, you process the whole, um, whole yeah. work, art, art form. So it's something that um, I really enjoy. I really enjoy the whole process. I, I, I really enjoy painting. I, I, if I'm not painting one day, I, uh, I, I feel terrible. So you paint actually nearly every day? Well, I'm, I'm always creating. I'm not always painting. Yeah, but you do either um, head pieces or you're doing something. I'm always doing something. Always, always, cool. always. Always, <laughs> always keeping myself busy. Because especially, you know, when COVID hit, I was I was stuck in Italy because uh, I was supposed to do all these, these traveling uh, at, in the beginning of the summer. But when COVID hit, mm -hmm. that was all struck down. Mm -hmm. nothing, was, nothing was happening. So I was stuck in a basement an apartment that I rented and I had all my tools and I was just basically just drawing. I was doing videos. I was doing live videos, just, you know, talking to people if I could 
because it was very, very, uh, as an artist, it wasn't a big deal, but I'm, I'm more of a social artist than, mm-hmm, than mm-hmm. most artists. So I, I felt very depressed. It really, yeah. it really affected me. So uh, Donna, the owner of, um, of um, Pro Air said, look, why don't you do some videos? You know, you do some videos of what you're doing. And that's when I started getting into doing different little segments of, of, of my life as an artist in my basement. Cool. cool. Um, so what are the main themes or topic that you think you're known for? Um, definitely um, biomechanical. Uh, I, I sent you pictures of some of the stuff that I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what I like about what I do is that I, I, I use airbrush, but I, 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 it's very, it's not, there's two types of airbrush artists. There's the free hands and then there's the people that use stencils. Mm-hmm. And I kind of mix both of them because making stencils is one art form. And yes. using it on body is, is another art form. So it, I'm combining both of them and giving that sharp, feel to it so when you see my work you see there's a sharpness but there's also a softness to it yes. so it really Definitely. balances out really well mm-hmm. it balances out really well the way I, I apply my makeup how I apply my uh, my my layers and Definitely, it's something that uh, I'm, a, I'm inspired from like uh, like artists like H.R. Giger uh, mm-hmm. who designed Alien I love his work um, and yes. other artists that I, I really uh, inspire from. So it's it's something that uh, I, I kind of took from Pasher, I took from Giger, and I kind of developed my own style with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably how it works, is it? You, you you are inspired, but you create something new from 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 the works that you also like. Yeah, from other yeah. artists. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, uh, copying is uh, is what they say is a, a flattery for the artist. I mean, you know, when because I have I have tons of people that copy my copy my work, and I'm really happy because you know they're 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 trying to figure out how I did it, and that's mm-hmm. how 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 I work. When I when I see H.R. Giger, I remember when I when I when I was very young, I was like maybe 15 years old. I bought my first Necronomicon book from each year gigger mm-hmm. and it cost me like $200. I was like oh, fabric. I, I was very expensive, but for okay. me, it was worth it. I still have, yeah. I still have those books. And when I used to look at these books, I used to be like, Oh, does he do this? This is incredible. Oh mm-hmm. my God. What's really funny is that back, uh, back in 2013, I, I found, no, it wasn't actually, it was two years ago. I went back to see my books and I was at my brother's place in Montreal and I started looking through the books and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can do that. Because <laughs> I understand the process. Uh, and yeah. that's that's the whole difference between uh, lear- learning from visually, but also experiencing it mm-hmm. by doing it. You, you you develop your own technique and you can, you can I'm going to say that, um, so, you can uh, so. copy almost, almost to the to exact precise of of the other artists that you inspired from something that I I really enjoy uh, it dissecting people's art and seeing how how I would do it and how also how they would do it and and pretty much try to imitate it but also change it to your own way yeah um have you been in any magazines tvs um, yeah, I've been I've been in a couple of books. I've been in a couple of books from the World Body Painting Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Carla, uh, who he, she wrote four books, and I've been in, in two of them, I believe. Um, I've been in a couple of magazines in Montreal. I have pictures. I didn't. Um, I'll probably send it to you after. I couldn't find them, mm-hmm. um, but I have. I've done covers. I've done uh, articles. Um, I, I haven't really been on TV in, per se, but um, I, I've done, I worked on movies. I, I, were, I was in the movie industry for 10 years. So I work on films like Death Race, The Aviator, 300, um, cool. The Dalian Tunnel, all these French productions when I was living in Montreal. So I worked in the movie industry as a makeup artist uh, and special effects. How does this work differs from your own project? When, for example, you're painting, doing a body paint, but how does it work, like uh, being there painting someone's idea? 
Um, like technically. I think it's all the same technique. You just you just have to kind of put your 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 feet in their shoes and see how how to how to kind of develop your technique to 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 imitate theirs. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's like it's all about layering. It's about uh, what colors to put first, what to what uh, what details to put first. It's something that you kind of have to. It takes time to develop. Uh -huh. It takes time to to understand also because it's it's every artist is different. Every application, uh, how they apply their 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 paint or how they apply their makeup is is a process and you have to kind of mm -hmm. learn from it without actually seeing them work uh, so you kind of have to kind of imagine it, imagine what uh what how they work and so you mm -hmm. kind of transform your your technique and and, and change uh, uh the way you work has it happened to you when you are working for somebody on their own idea that you develop their idea their design into something better something new oh, or, or was it rather keeping exactly to the to the to the sketch it all depends on the client it all depends yeah. on, on, the, on the situation um i've had um because body painting is an art form that's that comes and goes mm -hmm. um when i work on a sketch or work on an idea that is just a sketch it's just a basic idea mm -hmm. what i want to do it definitely changes completely. Like sometimes I would draw something out and when I start painting, it depends on my mood, depends on the model's mood and also the situation with the equipment, things change. So um, it's really important to to be versatile. You have to be able to mm -hmm. to, um, to adapt. Yes, at any moment, yes. Uh -huh. Any moment. So it, it all depends. Like I've had, I've done work for clients where they they want a specific thing and I did it exactly the way they want it. And there's other clients that says, look, do what you do best. And then, then they were very happy with the work because I took their idea and I, I ran with it and gave it a, a different feel to it. And uh, they loved it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that, this is what I meant. Right, the next question is, have you competed one in any competition? And when you sent to me the whole list of this competition, I'm sure you would be able just to remember them. I'll just show them, show the viewers. Um, it's just, I don't know, how is it even possible to achieve so much? It was like, you know, after, after, after putting everything in like a single line, every single event, it took me like three pages to scroll through in the Word document. Well, so this is incredible. Well, the, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I, I just turned 53 um, and uh, I, I started when I was 18. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, there's, there's so many jobs and events that I don't even remember I did. Mm -hmm. that I, I can't even think, okay, what did I do back in 87, 89 <laughs> and all that. But what, what, when I started my, my, my career as a body painter, I kind of kept, because uh, I always took pictures of all my work, even the smallest things. So that's, that keeps me uh, informed on what I've done before. So that's mm -hmm. easier to find more information. But there are times where I did, did contracts that took zero pictures, beautiful work, and I just kind of so busy, didn't think about it. And moved on and i completely forgot about these contracts so it's it's like i said it's 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 something that i've been doing for a while i've been competing and i go to as many events as possible i, I try to be part of uh, the whole community and uh inspire people and also be inspired from like I, I, if i didn't go to certain places i would have met pasher i would not have met leroy roper i would not have met uh uh, you know, um, Craig Tracy and all that, all these very important people in our industry. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I get a lot of help from people because I compete because uh, they're saying, aren't you tired of winning? Aren't you tired of competing? And I'm like, I love competing. It's not about winning. Yes, it's about yes, okay. the whole process. It's the whole developing the idea and then getting, getting, working with the model, then getting to the event and doing, and having and that meeting people as well, is it? It's, it's all yeah, yeah, kind of part exactly. of it. Things yeah, and true. also uh, um, being successful in this very short time you have to do, to to do your artwork, mm -hmm. if you finish and you're happy with it, it's worth the trip. It's, exactly. And basically, if you win, it's just a cherry on top. That's what exactly. it is. Yeah, agree. Well, yeah. Um. So, do you have any other hobbies apart from face painting? 
Um, sculpting. I, I do a bit of sculpting when I have a chance. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I, I have a, a, an extensive Star Wars collection that I, I have uh, tons of like toys and stuff like that. So I collect a lot of toys on my spare time. Yeah. I like hunting. I like finding, going to shops. Like every country I go to, I try to find a toy shop or try to find a place where I can find something different from uh, from uh, the whole Star Wars universe. So um, it's uh, it's it's a sad passion, but I, I enjoy it. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, as long as you enjoy it, exactly. But yeah. Yeah, but people well, people kind of like you collect toys and go. Yeah. Mm, I do. Uh, uh, yeah. Why not? Why not? As long as you enjoy it, so it's very important that you enjoy what you're doing and your all, all my your toys. hobbies. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I I I collect because I enjoy it, and it's it's it brings back great memories when I was a child. So. Yeah. Um. Besides that, no, I think I I, I pretty much do art all the time. I mm. mean, uh, besides the toys, uh, you know, I like going to the cinema, watching movies. Definitely, I'm a big I'm a big popcorn movie fan. Um. I really enjoy um. Watching these great productions of of uh -huh. these. Because I used to collect comics too. I used to collect a lot of comics before, but I stopped for a while. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just kind of keep myself busy with art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you run any Facebook groups or forums or shops? Um, I have a few groups. I have a group. Uh, I have uh, Key West, which is a, a festival that happens every October for ten days. It's a big uh, adult festival where we go down and we paint people. I have a, a page for that. I have my own Alex Hansen art page. Um, what else do I have? I have a few other other headpieces, uh, groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I try to keep myself updated. Like, you know, I started working with Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. I don't. I have no reason to be on Twitter or anything like that. But you know, Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I try to keep keep uh, updating of, of my new work and and all the different things I do. So it's for me, it's important to connect with people. Yes. And and Facebook and, and Instagram are really great uh, platforms to connect with people mm -hmm. and you know, interact. Uh, this group that you have for body paint, this festival for ten days, is it like a festival that's happening somewhere or is it online? No, it's happening. It's actually happening in, in the Key West, which is the, the Keys in Florida. It's the last mm -hmm. island in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, big adult festival. People are running around naked, painted, mm -hmm. uh, costumes, uh, cosplay. It's really, really an extraordinary event. We have uh, great clients. We have great friends that participate every year. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's fun painting these people because, you know, like one of my best customers, his name is Robert. He's an electrician mm -hmm. and his only vacation is that 10 days really. And that's where he goes crazy. He spends a lot of money on body painting. I, I, I make headpieces for him I, 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 and he competes in, in, in body painting competition there. And every and almost every year he wins because you know it's it's me and Juicy that do uh, the uh, body paint and designs and all that. So yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Do you, have any, do you have any funny stories in like body painting events or like wow well, every every body painting event is, is, a, is a funny story um i think i think the funniest was when i first started off where i would get myself into a lot of trouble i remember the first first time i went to this i uh, went to austria and i went to the world body painting festival and they were having this uh, body painting exposition and had all the artists and their work there and it was really funny because I was with a, a friend of mine and uh, we were looking through uh, a body painter as work and I'm like, it's nice, you know, it's not my style, but, you know, and he was sitting there and what was really funny was that I was kind of like, and uh, he goes, oh, do you want me to sign something? I'm like, no, <laughs> I walked away. <laughs> he ended up being one of the judges in the event, so he wasn't very <laughs> impressed with my, with my with my uh, my uh, my stopping him, you know, yeah. I was like, why would I need your autograph, you know, kind of yeah. thing. So it's a situation where I put myself, my put my foot in my mouth, and put myself <laughs> in weird uh, situations like that. I mean, yeah. it, at every event there's always something new. I remember yeah. one time I I was doing the trophies, 
And I got into a, a yelling uh, competition with the, 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 the trophy girl and then we got into a big fight and it just was really strange things happen during every year. It's always something, something strange and something great that happens in my life. <laughs> okay. Um, if you weren't an artist, what would you do? Uh, I think if I was, uh, if I was an artist, I think I'd be an art in some way because my mom's a chef. She's a really, really amazing chef, and so is my brother. I have a younger brother. Uh, he owns a restaurant in Montreal, and uh, I think I'd be probably cooking because I love, I love, I love to cook, but I just don't have, I don't put the time into it. Mm. Uh, maybe a cook, maybe a teacher. I enjoy teaching, um, but uh, yeah, I just, I think, you know, teaching or cook, something like that. Did or you do even a tattoo artist. What does it say? A tattoo artist. Oh maybe. yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love tattoos. Uh, so, are you are you thinking about being a tattoo artist at all, or not really? Well, definitely, the past few years I have been thinking about it. It's just a question of I have to settle down. I have to mm. stay in one place for at least a couple of years to have to build my clientele. Mm -hmm. But it's something that definitely I would love to try, mm -hmm. and maybe later on get into that really because I, I know a lot of tattoo artists and. and They're always asking, why don't you do tattoos? You make good money. Yeah. Have you done any other jobs than being an artist? Well, definitely, definitely. I, I worked uh, at a younger age. I was, I was a waiter uh, at a restaurant, a really a very, a very nice uh, Spanish restaurant in Montreal. Uh, I did busboying for almost 10 years in clubs. Um, I've done security. Uh, for mm -hmm. shows, I've done. Uh, I, I did security for David Bowie, for Run DMC, uh, Ramones. I've done like pit security. I was the, you know, the the line where people try to climb over. That, that's what I was. When I was throwing people off the stage and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I've done different jobs uh, in, in my lifetime, but but it's it's it was in in the in the beginning of my uh, my my career. Okay, yeah. Okay. So what would you do if you were given like 1 million euro, for example, would you have a different life? Um, no, I think I, I would, I would buy an apartment and travel the world. So it's exactly the same thing I'd be doing. Definitely my toy collection would be a lot bigger, but, um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think I would I would just enjoy the, the, the remaining time of my life right now, which is being in art and, and doing exactly the same thing I'm doing now, uh, mm -hmm. teaching, mm -hmm. uh, competing. It's not much of a big change. It just I would buy property. Property is very important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. What item would you be lost without? Um, my airbrush, of course. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, without I think without any of like any of my airbrushes, I think I wouldn't be where I am. Um, um, definitely something uh, that I would feel very empty without. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even like like the past week, I haven't painted, but I've been doing other things. But the airbrushes are always they're always next to me. They're like close to me. So yeah, I think my airbrush. Yeah, cool. What person, dead or alive, would you invite for a dinner? Uh, definitely my mom, of course. That's the first, first choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I love my mom. I love her. I love her so much. Um, but I, I think uh, there would be two people I would love to meet. Would I, I would love to have dinner with would be H.R. Giger, definitely. But mm -hmm. he passed mm -hmm. three years ago. He passed away. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to sit down and just talk with him. You know, I, 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 what's really weird is that I've been in Europe for the past 15 years and in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, I had every opportunity to go to, to go actually go meet him. And I never took that opportunity. And that's what I regret mm -hmm. the most. Mm -hmm. So this is a lesson when you want to do this, want do it as soon as possible. <laughs> it's 
is it? Exactly. If you have a dream or an inspiration, do the best you can to to, to fulfill it. It's really important because yeah. yeah. you feel feel more complete. Mm -hmm. What is the last great book that you have read that inspired wow. you? Books. I, I don't read much books. I read a lot of comic books. Um, um, I haven't read any books in a while. It's yeah, embarrassing. Then. It's embarrassing because I, I read a lot of like articles on the internet. And, and, and Yeah, this is the, the type of editing that you like. So it's it's not like anything like I, I had the but time. I used to love books. I used to love books when I was a kid. I used to read anything yeah. I'd get my hands on. I can understand this. I had a time, I think for 10 years, I didn't read any like proper book because I was too busy painting, also with kids, I've got two kids. So it's like in different periods of your life that life you don't just don't read. Nowadays, I started to read other books when I go to, to, to my work. So this is like the only way that I can read books, but otherwise okay. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm a big fantasy uh, kind of person. I love fantasy, like mm -hmm. comic books, um, graphic novels. Mm -hmm. I like reading more about people's experiences than, than actual what they've done. I always like to hear like, you know, uh, stories on how they develop their, their, mm -hmm. their life. Yeah. Yeah. It's inspiring, is it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what makes you angry? Angry? Yes. I have three things. Mm -hmm. Stupidity. I hate stupid people. I hate egos, people with big egos, mm -hmm. and I hate people that are late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were early today. <laughs> you came a bit early to, you connected early, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, tardiness is, I think, even for myself, when I'm late, I, 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 I beat myself up. So uh, those are the three things I, I makes me very angry. It's people that are, are ignorant and stupid. Yeah. Because ignorance is, it's, it's, you know, ignorance is one thing, but being stupid is another thing. But there's yeah. two things that, you know, they, they annoy me. They, they're, they're my pet peeves. Mm -hmm. And uh, people with egos. I've met people like very famous artists and and uh, maybe 10% are, have big egos. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rest are, are pretty lovely people, very down mm -hmm. to earth. And all that. So I, I, they, they say never to meet the people that inspire you, but I, I, I've always kind of bumped into them. So... Mm -hmm. um but like i said those are the three things i i just it just makes me furious mm -hmm. do you have any fictional character that you identify with um well there's a few um like I said, I'm a, sorry sorry probably um, some of the from the star wars yeah, definitely, definitely. There's a, there's a lot of characters that I, I I adore from that from from that franchise from that 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 whole universe. But I think I identify more with with comic book characters mm -hmm. than anything else. Um, I don't know if you know Nightcrawler. He's part of the X Men. Mm, He's the one that uh, teleports. You know, he teleports from place. Anyways, he's a really his character is very very. Uh, He's a fun-loving guy, but he has, he's he has a lot of demons. So he, he looks like a demon, but he he's very religious, and it's really it's a, such a strange combination mm -hmm. when they develop his his character that I see myself, you know, kind of like him. Mm -hmm. And he's making portals. No, he he teleports. Teleports to the places. Yeah, he can. Oh, if this he, is something he, that you definitely want to have, is it? This skill. Exactly. <laughs> this is a very good that, skill. If, he, if he's been there, he can teleport. No matter. He has to see the place to teleport it. So he can't just teleport. Someone goes teleport to to. Well, but there is always one way. Then you just go one way and return by teleport. <laughs> you save on the back to travel. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, that's a character I really, I really enjoy. I like it. I like the way he developed his, uh, his. Uh, yeah. I need to his look history. up. I need to look up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's strange. He's a strange character, but he's he's very well developed. I like him. I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. Favorite and most inspirational place. 
Well, I love Montreal. That's definitely some place that I, mm-hmm. I, I, I absorbed as a, as a young adult. But I think the place that really, really inspired me. Well, it's really strange. I have two places. I, I've, I've been to Sweden. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't believe how beautiful the people are. Like, and the, not just the people, but uh, the the whole country, how like the buildings are beautiful, the people are beautiful. I was just mm-hmm. kind of like, wow, this place is amazing. Like all the women are six, six two blonde and <laughs> buildings are very high and beautifully developed. Yeah, so that's one place I, I really, I really enjoyed. But another place is Italy. Definitely Italy is... Um, it's, I, I never thought I would be here. I never thought I would, I would even visit Italy. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's so many things I love about Italy. And there's also a lot of things I don't like about it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think Italy is somewhere that, you know, it's you always, there's so much to see. There's so much to, to uh, inspire from, so much to, to explore. Mm-hmm. And what international art destination you would like to visit or visit it? Um, uh, right now, there's not a lot of um, events happening because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the World Body Painting Pe- Festival. It's going to be their 25th year next year. Mm-hmm. I've been going there for uh, almost 13, 15 years. I've been going 15 years. I've been going to that, mm-hmm. to that event. So definitely I want to go back. Uh, so we're going to meet there because I, I already applied for my place as being an artist. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, I'm uh, I'm still working on my ideas, but I'm I'm going for the team competition with my friend Yuri. So we're going to compete in the in the, in cool. the team competition. Cool. Uh, but it's going to be great to be back because it's a place where I feel at home. It's some place. Uh, Austria is a place I've always felt like it's where I feel more most comfortable mm-hmm. with the environment and the people around me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was hoping to, to take part in team competition, but I didn't find the artist yet. So for now, I applied for face painting, but we'll see. Maybe I'll change it and okay. compete next to you. That will be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, where do you get your news? Oh, my news, like everybody else, on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's oh. probably the only news I, I get. So, yeah, um, Facebook. Yeah, well, like I said, I, I kind of follow some some uh, left wing um, uh, news news uh, companies and stuff like that. Definitely, I, I watch the right, you know, because I I'm really into what's going on in the U.S. I'm really mm-hmm. involved in uh, what's going on in, in Europe. So, but uh, I try to keep an open mind. Uh, mm-hmm. I have friends that are, are anti-vaxxers and anti-this and anti-that, mm-hmm. and they're really good friends. I love them to death, but mm-hmm. I just find, like, I got vaccinated. I had to because I travel so much. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to to, to do mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. But I have friends that don't want to get vaccinated. And it's just kind of like, you know, I respect them for their views, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have to play it safe for me, especially that, you know, I have a, I have a, I'm diabetic. I have other conditions that I have to kind of think about, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just something that I, I, I ended up doing. So, Maybe. but yeah, the news, basically uh, Facebook, I get, I usually go to different uh, channels on the internet and, and look through different uh, reports, I guess mm-hmm, you could say that. Mm-hmm. What is the best piece of advice that you have been given? I think the best advice I've ever been given was from my mom. Mm-hmm. And it's, she always told me, just be yourself, mm-hmm. just be who you are. And, and not everybody's going to like you. Not yeah. everybody yes. you're going to meet is going to understand you. But what's important is that you keep the people that do understand you and that do appreciate you close to you. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it's, I think that's one thing my mom has always told me is that, Always be yourself and be open to people and open to new ideas. Yeah, that's worthwhile. Yeah, worth. Yeah, if you compare yourself to an animal, what would it be? Well, who would you be? An animal? Yes. Uh, well, I am a Leo, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm also a monkey. In Chinese <laughs> horoscope. So yeah, I can identify. Uh, 
with a monkey more than than a lion. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think monkeys are they're extraordinary. Uh, uh, you know, beasts. They're just they're so intelligent. They're so mm -hmm. they're so funny. They're they're they have a great sense of humor. And they, they, they're open to explore. And that's what I, I think yeah. I, I like the monkey. Yeah. yeah cool. Monkeys, are, monkey. I love monkeys. So, yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a routine when planning, planning your design? I mean, like the actual painting. Yeah. Like I said, I, what I usually do is I start off with the, the concept. I work on the ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I, I draw it out on, you know, now I'm using my iPad before I used to draw all freehand, like with pencil crayons and stuff like that. Then I started getting into uh, Procreate, which is you can, it's pretty much like kind of like Photoshop in a way. So um, yeah, I prepare my drawings. Um, and uh, I, I, what's really funny is I always find a, a model that, that uh, complements my work. And sometimes it's someone that I met from a long time ago. They, hey, how are you? I say, hey, what are you doing this time? You kind of kind of feel, you know, I I never really look for models, mm -hmm. which was really difficult in the beginning. In the beginning, it was, it was impossible to find models because mm -hmm. people were like, ooh, you paint me naked. It's, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. But now I don't have that issue. But, uh, yeah, so I, 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 I developed my, my artwork with the model, and um, then I pretty much, you know, go – and paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is handy when you don't have to look for a model. I believe that it's also at times now that people recognize that this is actually an art form, not just being uh, naked, but also because people know you and they, you know, you're worldwide known an artist. So people. It's also my reputation yes. dealing with people. I'm very respectful, very professional. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of artists out there that are not. Mm. Um, even some of the people that I know personally that they treat their models like really not really nice. They're not really nice mm. people to their models. So I try to be the complete opposite of that. I try to, mm. to accommodate to my models and, and then make sure that they feel. Um, it is very important because they're going to show your work and they need to feel good with your work, with yourself, with like they, they, they need to feel like kind of not too exhausted to actually go and show this work. So it's, yeah. it's I think that's the primary uh, work for us as an artist just to go and make sure that your model is feeling well, is both emotional and physically, is it? Yeah, definitely. That's what's the most important part because... As I like, I, when I teach my class, I, I try to tell people that you know your model is fifty percent of your work. Mm -hmm. She's fifty percent. She if if she can make or break your design, you mm -hmm. know, just the way she moves, the way she acts, the way she feels, it can mm -hmm. can ruin it or she can make it better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so you, as, as you're developing, as you're developing your your like like the model I have for for next year. Every time I, I, I do silicone or I do a, I do a piece of, of, the, uh, of the puzzle, I send her pictures to get her excited. So I want her to be excited when she gets on stage. I want her to be mm -hmm. excited to yeah. present my piece. So it's really important to be, it's very important. One thing is very important is communication mm -hmm. and being always in communication with the people you work with, the people you love, the people that you, you know, in, you, you inspire and the people that, you know, that you, that inspire you. It's really good, good way of living by communicating mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. feelings and also what you think. Mm -hmm. um, when you're looking for your model, do you look at um, some additional uh, skills that they have, for example, uh, can they do show on stage or uh, on stage, or is it not that important? Um, well, I prefer working with dancers. Mm -hmm. um, not only because they can, they can dance, but also most most dancers, their physique is is perfect for body painting. Mm -hmm. um, they know their bodies. They know what looks good and what doesn't look good, and that's really important yes. when it comes to selling uh, your art. Um, so definitely working with, uh, cause I've worked with ballerinas and mm -hmm. they're too stiff. They're very stiff people. They're not very, they're just very, you know, robotic. Like technically I don't like you mean, yeah, just their bodies too technical. Is that is what you mean? Yeah. They're very <laughs> stiff. They're very like, because you know, of their, the way they, they dance is the way they, they are and mm -hmm. as people are fine. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting um, but point. When you have, Never thought of that. Yeah. It's it's weird because I, I always thought that, you know, you're a dancer, you're a dancer, yeah. you know your body, but they're, they're just, I've worked with two or three ballerinas in my lifetime and they're just, mm. they're not my kind of model. They're beautiful. They're, they're, of course. Their bodies yes. are perfect. It, they're great for posing. They're great for photo shoots. But besides the photo shoots, they're not good for performance, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes but sense. But dancers, dancers are much more expressive when they, when they, they, they wear your art. Mm-hmm. Tell, uh, tell me about your uh, body painting kit. Do you have like a special box that you carry or you, you change it or you developed it for years? How does it look like? Would you be able to send me a picture, for example? Uh, yeah, I can send you a picture. Um, so, well, when I first started off airbrushing, I thought the more guns uh, I had, the easier the work's going to be. And like you said, the, the problem with, with airbrush is that once you use one, you have to clean them. Yeah. So when you have you have 60 guns and all of them are dirty, yeah, None is going to work. <laughs> it's going to be problematic to get yeah. them to work uh, and, and also enjoy yourself. Um my kit is really very simple. I usually have my stencils. Mm-hmm. I have my cardboards, which are like flyers that I, I steal from restaurants, like cardboard styles. So basically, they're caches. When I airbrush, I need a sharpness. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a ton of those in a Ziploc. I have my airbrushes. I have my compressor hose, my moisture trap, my regulator. Those are the things that are all I need. And my paint of course Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not a very big kit i i rarely use brushes um i mean i don't even have a brush in my kit at all but i have all of the small details you mostly do still with airbrush pretty much yeah Hmm, cool i would think that like I wouldn't be able to, well, obviously I'm not an airbrush artist. I've tried it a couple of times, but I won't be able to, to work without the brush. But yeah, obviously, yeah, um, you're a master. It's, 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 it's really about just controlling the gun, controlling mm-hmm. the trigger um, and your movement. It's really mm-hmm. about how you move and how, how you use a trigger. Because if you're doing fine work, you, you're pulling very little on the trigger. So it's really about controlling that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, what are the main skills you think that help you to work as a body painter? Skills. Um, apart from, I mean, I mean, apart from art, um, art skills, like, like personally. I think uh, I'm being very observant. I'm uh, like I, I, I've talked to a lot of people that have known me for a long time. And they, they always thought I was a very quiet person. I never talked. And, um, but I, I'm, I'm, a very, uh, uh, I'm a person that sits back, observes, and then I speak. I'll never speak. Every time I speak before I think, I put my foot in my mouth. It always happens. So I, try to, I always try to be observant of my surroundings, um, of the people I'm, I'm interacting with. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and that's, I think that really helps in the art form. Yeah, that is very uh, clever. <laughs> I can't yeah. do that. I first speak. <laughs> right. But, yeah, but it really helps. It helps with uh, being being open and observant. Is, is It helps uh, with anything that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I, like, I do a lot of research on the internet. I, I, I have, like, my computer is packed with, with images of everything you can think of. From funny things to more surreal things, uh, technical like drawings and and uh, how to draw a hand. I have like 20,000 20, files how to draw body mm-hmm. parts, all yeah. pictures of all that. So it's really about just uh, collecting enough information. So when you when you, you when you need that information, mm-hmm. you can grab it and use it. It's like it. your own mm-hmm. library for for getting inspiration. Is that right? Pretty much, yeah. 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 Do you do like um, canvas art as well nowadays? Sorry? Do you do canvas art, like paint on the canvas? Yeah, I've actually I've been painting uh, a lot of like leather jackets. I've painted mm. some some bags for a, a designer here in Italy. Um, I'll send you pictures of the the jackets I've done for. Oh yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. 
Perfect. Yes. Um, I've done a couple of canvases when I was in in Korea because I was I was only fifteen days of quarantine, so that's all I did was just paint. <laughs> um, there's not much to do but paint. Um, yeah, but I've I've done a few canvases, and I I I think I did last year. I did a, an event here in Fermo, and I painted like ten canvases, and I sold one. But my art is not. It's not. It's it's very. Uh, particular for it's not really made for Italy my work um, mm -hmm. it's more made for the U.S. or Canada where people enjoy what I do what I like mm -hmm. so I paint for myself I don't really paint for anybody in a sense uh, uh, yeah mm -hmm. but I'll send you some pictures of some of the stuff I've done cool. lately and and uh, mm -hmm. you guys can check it out on the video yeah what is your dream project my dream project, to be honest, I think one of the reasons why I got into body painting and why uh, after I, I, I did it for a few years was having uh, a book of my artwork in it. So did you do something towards that? Like you, you are in a few books, but you mean that you, you want to have your own book? Is my, that own, right? my own proper book, Alex Hansen Art. Mm -hmm. um, I've... No, I haven't really tried. I, I've, I've, I've dreamt about it. I've, I've, I've talked to people about it. And uh, it just hasn't happened yet. And hopefully it will yet, before. Yet. I'm sure yeah. you have a lot of amazing photos. And they could and be used in a, like a small format. And then you can create, obviously, a few more works to put in a bigger format. So I'm sure that it's not much to to be done to actually to to find proper pictures for your for your book because no, you have, I, have so, I, have, I have way too many pictures yes you've got so many so many of amazing works you, yeah i'm sure you it's can just, use it's just what i what i need to do is sit down with someone who, who can be able to write my book mm -hmm. and also i have to make sure that all the images that i use are all signed off like all the models are mm -hmm. are you know I don't want to be sued. Yes. Which people they they think you make they, people think you make a book they make you that you're rich, and you're not. You're no. you you don't make any money on books. Yeah. There's no money in books except for the publisher. The publisher makes all the money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I trust it's, me. It's I know. It's more for your own satisfaction, is it? For yourself. Yeah. It's also not just for my own satisfaction, but also to share my artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, when I when I bought the, the H.R. Giger book, that book inspired me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yeah. the kind of, that, that's what I want to donate. Yeah. If I'm people, sure you're still, you know, well, even without the book, you inspired a lot of people worldwide. So. No, uh, thank you. You don't have to have a book to inspire anyway, but yeah, that would be lovely to see your book. Um, I would love to see to, it. I just, yeah. I would just love to have a book, and uh, because I, I did a, I did a few years back. I did a, I published a little booklet full of uh, postcards, and um, I, I made like a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. A thousand, make so much money off of them. So I brought them to the World Body Painting Festival. I think I sold twelve. Mm -hmm. And uh, people were taking pictures of them instead of buying them. Mm -hmm. So it was very. Very, very depressing when when you go to the world's biggest body painting festival and nobody buys. They were really cheap; they're like five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what's really great about those postcards is that I actually made more money giving them away than actually selling them. How is that? Well, basically, they were my publicity. Basically, when I would, I'd be on a plane, you know, you know, and people go, "Hey, what do you do?" And I, I give them, I give them my a set of postcards, and they're like, "Oh my God, I got two contracts on flying from, flying around in, uh, in the plane, uh, and major contracts too." So I mean, it's just opportunities to give your artwork so people understand what you do. Mm -hmm, yes, and, yes. Uh, and they, and I, I've been hired so many times because of them because I gave mm -hmm. them away. Mm -hmm. That's how the, the whole. Uh, working with eleven production companies in in, in in Montreal, that's that those cards gave me that opportunity to meet yeah, these people. Right. Yeah, because when you when people are asking you what are you doing, you cannot just say that you're an artist. Well, you can say, but then it wouldn't sh like it wouldn't say them it's anything. All, it, it really helps the fact that they can grab something and take yes. it with them and look it over. Yes, yes, that's right. That's true. Yeah. 
Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Hopefully sleeping, but um, <laughs> 10 years, uh, definitely back in Montreal, um, uh, working. Um, I don't think I'll be traveling as much, but I, I, that's one thing I would like to, I wanted to do uh, with uh, my partner in Korea. Um, we're thinking about opening up a school in Korea. Cool. Um, it's like makeup school or like both makeup and body art. Well, it's going to be an art school. It's art. going to be makeup, body painting, mural painting, everything that I do. I want to be able to teach so or have is, someone teach. So this is another of your dream projects. Is that right then? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I really enjoy teaching, but I never thought I would be teaching. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like... It's, it's something to fall back on, I, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are people that want to learn art, and uh, I love teaching it, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you do with the head pieces which are, um, which are <laughs> used after you use them in the competition? Well, a lot of times, um, if I do keep them, because a lot of times I give uh, my head pieces to my models if they want it as a gift. I use the, sometimes I use it for demos, for classes, um, you know, for small events. I, I reuse them, just change the whole design. It's just have the headpiece as a compliment. That's what, that's what basically what a headpiece is supposed to be. It's not supposed to overbear. It's mm -hmm. not supposed to take over the body painting. It's supposed to, it's supposed to flow with the body painting. It's supposed to complement the body painting. It can't be just this humongous headpiece and the body painting is, has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. So your your no your head pieces are like separate piece of art, I believe. Like they 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 are so intricate. I work a lot. I work very hard on on doing something. <clears throat> excuse me, something original. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely something that takes weeks and months to do, and I I, I take my time. I never rush. Uh, I've rushed head pieces because it's kind of like you know it happens but i like to be prepared before mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you have been judging in so many competitions as well how um, uh, did it help uh, you to see your and create your pieces differently afterwards yeah definitely i think after every year that i, I judged i won two years in a row because it really being behind on the other side of, of, of that table you 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 learn how people act and how they how they explain and what 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 um what's the word i'm looking for what really excites you and how they explain their their piece mm -hmm. so it's really important that you understand that people are different they explain differently but there are there is a formula that you you should explain your piece and it, it sh you you have to sell your piece you have to explain to the judges this is what has inspired me this is what i wanted to do this is what this is that's the, that's the reaction i want to hear mm -hmm. i don't want to hear but this is know, also wanna... very hard like myself i feel like my art is explained because i'm not very good with words like like you know like your your first language is is it not english my English, yeah, my first language is English. Is English. Like, my English yeah. is my third language. It, it was so hard for me first to learn the second one and then the third one. And then I feel that I lost so much of my vocabulary. And now it's like it's so hard to explain everything in words. I feel like it's so much easier to explain it in pictures. But then, you see, it's only me who understand that. So it's really difficult to to go and explain pieces to to the I judges. Think what's really what, what, what I think really what's important is that you simplify everything. Mm -hmm. You have to make it as simple as possible because the, the more you make, the, not just the, not the design in a sense, but your explanation has to be simplified because the simpler it is to explain it, the easier it's going to be to explain. Mm. You, have to, you have to break it down into certain, okay, wh what am I trying to explain? Okay, well, this is... This is kind of the history. This is what I was trying to 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 ex, um, explore in in my art, and this is the end result. 
So those are the three things you need to kind of think about as you're processing the idea how to explain what you're doing. Uh, what advice would you give for someone wanting to break into face and body art? Um, like I mentioned to you, try to participate as, at, at many events that you do. It's mm -hmm. very important to be part of it. And showing your art is a very important part of it. Uh, learning from other artists is a very, very important part of it. Um, yeah, I definitely would tell them to go out and meet the people that you that inspire you. Um, take as many classes if, if you need to. Um, and what really is important is that everything you do, you, you, you photograph it. Even if it's a small drawing, if it's a painting, if it's anything, always keep that information. Yeah, this is a good advice. Yes, because you it, think, okay, can... I'll do it later or I'll get the photos from somebody and then you forget and then it's and then maybe nobody took Gone. the right pictures and then you're just without it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that's important. Like I, I explained to a lot of photographers when I work with them is that I do my body painting, you do your thing, but I'm going to take some pictures for references for myself, mm -hmm. for my, my, own, my own use, but I will never tell the photographer wh what to do or how to do it. They do what I, I do my job, they do their job, mm -hmm. but in between, mm -hmm. I, I have to take pictures of all my work that I do. So I, I've gone to situations where I worked for a photographer for almost four years. I did 28 photo shoots with him and I got zero back from him. I got mm -hmm. very small resolution images and he he has control control of all these amazing work that i did so i i learned my lesson so now nice. when i work with photographers I, I i tell them look i need to take pictures it has nothing to do with you this is my own my own um mm -hmm. my own work that yeah. i i need and especially myself. that you, you sometimes you just take it from the perspective that you think you see your your own work and then they see it differently because they see the overall body is that right and you look at the particular places and you want to see it this way and then sometimes it's just yeah yeah, yeah because it. like like they have a different vision of what you're doing mm -hmm. and uh there it's usually when i work with photographers more than once is because they can they understand my vision mm -hmm. A lot of times i work with a photographer and they take pictures and i never call them back because they just don't understand what I'm trying to produce. Mm -hmm. And I would rather not get into that kind of situation ever again, because, you know, you, you spent six to eight hours painting somebody. That's not even including the whole development of, of it before, the drawing, the idea and all that. Mm -hmm. So once you go to see, like I did a the video I sent you of the, uh, of, I'll explain it. It's a, it's a big eye here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the mouth mm -hmm. well i did that was that a jam i did the video because that's what i do and there was three photographers there and they all sent me the pictures and they're just awful mm -hmm. i couldn't use not one of their pictures but i was very happy to make get that video done so you know it's kind of like the, and i would never work with them again i never invite them to to a jam ever again because they were just amateurs and they were was overexposed. They're like, no, we need more light. I said, no, you need less light. It's, it's easier mm -hmm. to uh, grab detail from the dark than from, from overexposing mm -hmm. uh, picture. Because once you overexpose it, you can get that detail back. So do you have your like own good camera or you just use a phone? Um, I use a phone. Yeah. 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 Well, I used, to, I, I, I do have a good camera but I, I just don't travel with it because I'm always scared yes. to drop it or lose yes. it and everything like that. So and now, nowadays, the technology is so good that you can you can rely on, on the phone yeah. pictures anyway. Yeah, yeah. And most of the stuff is for, for web, so mm -hmm. it's for the internet, so it doesn't have to be high resolution and yeah, all that. Exactly. So. Oh, wow. That was a very interesting talk, and um, it was quite a lot of in-depth of um, what you're doing how does it look from the inside um, mm -hmm. I was never doing airbrush and that was really really interesting for me especially uh, from from to hear it from you uh, you're a real master of, of this so yeah thank you so much and no problem yeah and 
we will see each other around and I would love to talk to you in real life as well. Definitely. Um, yeah. We'll look at too. Yeah, thank you so much. For thank you for having me. Thank okay. you for uh, for inviting me to your your interview and I'm going to send you more pictures of my work. Perfect. Yeah. I'll do that now and uh, yeah. Thank Thanks. you.